In today's episode of The Weekly Hustle, I'm shooting my hometown in Boston, and I'm going to be talking about how to deal with tough times. Make sure to watch this video. Welcome back. Welcome to a weekly episode of The Weekly Hustle. My name is Kevin, and I just wanted to take the time to just thank you. You know, not too often do we get a chance to just listen to each other. And there's there's something about the weekly hustle that I really like. It's that long form type of thing. Normally, I script out the weekly hustle, but I thought this week we would do something a little different and just have a heart to heart, speak from the heart, just like how I used to do all these years, because that's what I realized people want. They want authenticity. They want realness. And I'm just going to give it to you raw and real on this uh, weekly hustle podcast. Now, if you're new to the weekly hustle, it's where I essentially do a few things. I'm documenting my in real life tutorial of hitting 10 million. If you're curious about why 10 million, it's essentially the start of generational wealth. It's basically 100K for the next 100 years. So I think if I hit that number, I'll be pretty set with me and my family. Also, this podcast and what this channel is all about is the art of Kaizen, continuous improvement, especially when you're hitting rock bottom, which uh, not too long ago, that's what I've been feeling more recently. So that's what this podcast is all about. From time to time, I take user submissions. So make sure if you want a personal interaction or you got a question for me, make sure to go to refugeehustle.com slash join. If you want a more one-on-one interaction, I tend to respond to people with uh, Loom videos and I try to make everything personal. And I feel like these days in this digital world, Things are very disconnected. Anyways, even though I'm speaking from the heart today, I got a few subjects I want to talk about. I want to talk about tough times in business, tough times with your parents, your family, and some of the things I've been trying to deal with and cope as well. Some of the things that have been helping me as well. Hey, and also before we start, make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell Make sure to show some support with it for your boy. Make sure also like this video to battle them dislikes like bots. Wow, I can't speak today. But yeah, that would really make my day. Let's get the obvious out of the way. Let's talk about tough times. And you might be asking yourself, you might be asking me like, hey, Kevin, why is your set so different? Well, it's because I'm actually in my hometown, Boston, and I had some really deep family stuff that uh, I'm going through at the moment. And uh, I'll probably tell you guys once everything is kind of settled as well, but pretty much essentially what you guys need to know is that basically there were some last minute health issues with one of my members of my family. It's, it's been really, really tough. And if you've ever wondered why I've been talking about subjects like end of life care or estate planning or anything like that, well, there's a good reason because this has been pretty much my life for the last few months. And there's so many aspects to this. One, there's the actual logistics. How do you set up a will? How do you set up an estate? I'm actually shooting a separate video on that. So if you're curious, if you haven't even discussed it with your parents, then this is something that you absolutely need to do. I was actually watching Ice One Cube. Not sure if you're familiar with him, Frank Wang. And he's such an inspirational person. He has all these funny videos. If you're if you're not following him, I would suggest that you go follow him. But he had this really moving video about him and his mom and his mom dealing with dementia. And he was talking about how he is essentially a healthcare proxy or taking care of his mom going through dementia at the moment. So it was really a moving video and had me thinking about, hey, have I had this conversation with my mom? Have I had this conversation with my uncles? Have I had this conversation to everyone that I care about? And you know, let's be honest, if you're Asian like myself, talking about end of life care, talking about funeral stuff, you know, that isn't the most sexiest type of <laughs> conversation you have. It's not like you're eating dinner and you're just like, hey, mom, let's let's talk about your funeral, right? It's never an easy subject. And plus, if you have multiple people in your family, how do you make sure that everybody's on the same page? How do you align everyone on the same thing? And it's really difficult. I've been having to do have really difficult conversations with my family, certain members of my family as well. And sometimes people just don't always think alike. When you're having these conversations, it's really finding the common goal. It's A, what's best for that family member? And B, what is best for the family, right? What is best for that person and what's best for that family? And it's it's been 
<laughs> taking a huge toll on me. I, I spent a lot of hours trying to create a checklist and stuff. And I think finally now things are set time are settling down, but essentially I had to make sure that all those documents and all that sort of stuff and everything from a medical background is taken care of. You know, what's really interesting. Sometimes I really do believe I, I take something like my healthcare degree for granted, for example, right? Because I'm able to navigate the the healthcare system. Like maybe I don't know every single little thing, but I know the right people to ask and I know the right questions to ask. And that's something that has helped me so much as well. Um, so it does take an emotional turn as well, especially if you're like myself and you're running a business like this. It can be very, very exhausting, meaning picking up and leaving your your normal routine to take care of a people. I mean, it's, I'll be honest, it's not the ideal scenario. I'm not that type of person who really is that, not caring, I care about people immensely, but I'm not the type of person to really be one-on-one, -on -one, hands-on taking care of people, right? Like I'm kind of like Asian dad in that sort of sense where I take care of all the logistics, I take care of all the strategy stuff, but you know, sometimes you just don't have a choice in life. And that's why I like Ice One Cube's video so much because he talks about how it's a blessing, how he's grateful to be in the position to take care of others. And it's really opened my eyes toward that. So it's been a really tough week on that end. Also dealing with tough times, I've been, I also recently lost my, or me and my closing partner, we separated. And uh, this is, you know, in, in sales, it's important to have a, a partner, right? Especially if you're doing something we call in, in my in my industry is something like a set close model where one person does a discovery call, the other one plans out the best roadmap for the other person, right? And so by losing my partner, I've been having to scramble and really find the right fit and stuff like that. And it's brought up all these kind of insecurities in my head, like, for example, Am I going to make it without my partner? Can I really start the wheel over again? Um, it's also made me think about my own independence. Am I, am I too reliant on other people, right? Should I just do my own, my own intro, like discovery and uh, like final closing type of calls as well? You know, I definitely have the ability for it. I have the work ethic for it, but it's been you know that feeling when you're, you get so good at something and then you just have that fear of changing again and what there's it just it just uh kind of made me realize i i got a little bit too comfortable maybe right and so it was a really tough week because literally within the same week i had i had very little transition time I had to find a different partner look for different partners interview essentially right find the right fit for people and uh, I'm happy to say I found <laughs> a pretty good uh, partner as well. And plus, I'm going to build, build up that dependency on myself. So I'm not reliant on other people as well, right? And so if there's three things that I really learned through this experience is one, if you've done it once by yourself, you can always do it again. For example, if I build up the skill, it doesn't suddenly go away, but you can work with other people. It's not the end of the world if things change, right? So that's the first thing I learned. The second thing I learned is really building out your own dis dependencies or contingency plans as well, right? So I don't know. Sometimes, I mean, in the sense of business and entrepreneurship, you're never doing everything by yourself. Like when, when somebody says that they're self-made, I always kind of not question them, but you're never you're never self-made. You're always reliant on a, a your clients. You're always reliant on your customers. If you're an uh, independent contractor, you're always reliant on your client, right? There's always someone that you're reliant on. And sometimes it's really scary putting your trust in other people because especially if someone is not as committed. Uh, and this is the third thing I learned. If you're not a, if the other person is not as committed, if the goals aren't aligned then everything breaks apart. Everything falls apart, including people's performance over time. One thing I noticed with my closing partner is that we used to be a killer team back when he was focused, but you know, no fault of his own. He's going through his own things. When priorities change, then it's time to assess, to do what's, what's right. And sometimes that means separating as well. 
And so also this has really forced me to, I guess the last thing is really forced me to look within myself and ask myself, well, why, why do I need someone else? Right. And when I really look deeper into it, it's just that I'm scared. I'm scared of being by myself, being independent again, because I work so great under groups. I love it. But, you know, if I'm going to really thrive, then I have to learn how to not rely on other people. And if I work with other people, that's great. It's like a relationship where it's like, it's great. Like you should always come into a relationship as a whole person and anything extra would be really, really great. You know, and for things like closing, I think I need to do the same thing. I've I've been doing discovery calls for a long time and I'm pretty good at it as well. And not to say I've never popped my own deals or anything like that or done the closing call, I guess, by myself. But, you know, it is uh, going through growing pains and I, I realize I have to just go through that again. So, but I, I'm happy to say this week, we, me and my new partner, we've been just killing it. Not to the point where we only had half a week and we did more volume than we ever did before. We had higher performance and I'm back on the gravy train, train again. And, you know, I was telling, I was telling my other friends that I was going down a deep black hole where, it was to that point where I saw everybody else winning and I was like, dude, I'm sucking gas. But it wasn't entirely, I wouldn't say it's entirely my fault, but it was my responsibility for for finding another contingency plan, right? Just because your performance isn't always good doesn't mean that your ability is not there. So that's one thing I learned this week, going through a tough week. And some of the things that have really, really, really been helping me as well was doing something as simple as a top 10 list. So if you follow my Instagram, Kevin the Refugee, follow me on Instagram, by the way. But if you follow my Instagram stories, one of the things I've been doing all the time is top 10 lists. So I'll come up with 10 ideas every single day. It has to be about something. It can be about anything. For example, how do I make more money today? Or what are 10 things that went really well? Or how 10, 10 ideas of what book I should write? Things like that. It can be anything. And I've been posting that people have really been liking it. And also I've been posting my gratitude journal. So I use something called the five minute journal. If you want to cop yours, uh, make sure go to affiliate links, support your boy with his channel, with the Amazon affiliate links or whatever link I have down there. But it's a really great journal because it forces me to think of three things I'm grateful for. Also has a really kick-ass quote every single day. And also it talks about three things that would make the day great in daily affirmations. And then there's a nightly review thing, which I tend to skip a lot. I, I won't lie to you guys, but there's that. Now that's really just been helping me stay, keep sane as well, uh, especially in times of uncertainty. And I think it's, especially when we're all in quarantine right now, it's something important to consider as well. All right. So what are some other things that though that have been really helping me? And here's the second thing I really want to talk about today is this man named Charles Poliquin. And if you don't know who Charles Poliquin is, he's basically an Olympic coach. He's also known as the strength sensei. And he actually passed away about two years ago. He had a genetic heart condition, which unfortunately took his life. It was really interesting because I first found out about Charles Poliquin. I think it was early 2006. I was in engineering school at the time and I was on these powerlifting forums. And a lot of times people would quote his articles or talk about certain theories that he has, like time under tension. Have you ever heard of that? Where there's timing of when you contract and whatnot. That or like if you hold something, that was actually created by Charles Poliquin. And he's also known for sayings like his nut and meat breakfast. <laughs> He gives a lot of, he's an interesting guy. He gives a lot of sexual innuendos too. And then he's also famous for deserve your carbs. And one of the interesting things about Charles Poliquin is that I used to follow him a lot, right? And, you know, somewhere along the way, I mean, I kind of lost touch with him, right? I stopped following his content and whatnot. And I don't know what happened, but I think more recently during quarantine, I saw a video of Charles and I found out that he passed and it really bummed me out. And then come to find that I find that he was on all the major podcasts, things like Tim Ferriss podcast. He was on Brian Rose. He was on, who's that powerlifter guy? Mark Bell. He was on so many different podcasts and stuff. And I started delving into his concepts and stuff. And especially in a time of uncertainty, he's been just helping me so much. Fun fact, I've been pretty much keto for 
the last two or three weeks pretty strict. One thing that I'm always telling myself is like, hey, you got to deserve your carbs. And I'm just like, okay. So he's been helping me with my health, right? And helping me stay consistent. Even after he's gone, I listen to a lot of his videos and I'll link a few videos down, down below too, if you're interested. And it's been very motivating for me, but I've been listening to that and then listening to his training advice. But also more importantly, one thing about top performers that you guys should know is that when someone is really, really, really good in one area, chances are they have a probably strong routines or they're probably strong in other areas as well. For example, Charles Poliquin, he was a really um, avid reader. He used to read so many books. He could speak, I think, a crazy amount of languages. I, I would say fifth, five or, or more. I can't remember. He spoke a lot of different languages. He was also really inspiring too because he would also donate 10% of all his all, all his earnings to causes like sex trafficking in the for children, right? Children who are getting pimped out and stuff and he would essentially fund these raids against these child sex traffickers. It was crazy. And then he was also an amazing dad and he always talks about Every week, you guys spend four hours to fuck all because you need to be able to have that off time that's unproductive and just spend it. And he would spend it with his daughter and he would always talk about his daughter and stuff and how he would raise her. And it was just very inspiring because essentially, I want to be like Charles Poliquin one day, right? He embodies this concept of Kaizen that I talk about where it's continuous improvement over time and I just really, I just really was so moved by Charles Poliquin. I was like, fuck, dude, why didn't I, why did I ever stop following him? But it hits differently now that I'm a lot older because I'm learning a lot from him. So I'm using a lot of his protocols right now for his no transmitter type of things as well. And I can cover all that. But if you are listening to this podcast, the, the underlying theme is, hey, you need to follow someone that is really inspiring to you. Someone who is on the path of Kaizen that really, really speaks to you or that you want to be one day as well. I don't know. Maybe some of you guys want to be like me. I don't know how many people are like that or some, someone else. I would actually I would actually tell you if, if you look up to me, you should look up to someone about, way above me, someone like Charles as well because he's the embodiment of what we need in this society. We need more compassion. We need more high performance. Um, and he, he was just a great guy. If you listen to his things, you'll really enjoy it. So uh, check out Charles uh, and I'll leave links below. Now, speaking of Kaizen, one of the things that I've been really focusing on as well, this is the third thing I want to talk about, is learning recently. So I might do this new series, by the way, on my channel. I'm not quite sure. I was talking about it with my editor, Daniel. And we were talking about doing a new series about one thing that I learned each day. And if there's something that you should know about me, it's like I'm a freaking huge nerd for learning. I love learning new things. It's one of my real passions in life. I, I could just go on and on and on and talk about learning all day. If you saw my videos back in California, I have a bookshelf. I literally brought five books as well. Maybe I'll share those five books that I brought over here as well. But I really enjoy learning a lot and I want to share two things that I'm learning that are really, really great and kind of my insights with them as well, right? So first things first, I'm not sure if you guys know, but I'm actually Chinese, I'm Cantonese. And one of my biggest insecurities is Cantonese. I'm not really good at Cantonese at all whatsoever. It actually really embarrasses me how bad I've gotten, especially over the years. I've gotten even worse. I wasn't even that good back then. And it's always been bothering me. And so one of the things that I invested in was actually a Cantonese course. And maybe I'll do a review later, but you know, it's always been on the back of my mind. Like I bought like certain tapes and stuff back in the day, but I was never really committed. And now, now with technology, there's so many great programs out there where you can learn and change that identity. And it's about time. I mean, I'm 32. It's about time to just really take the time to invest into learning Cantonese so I can go back and speak to my family again because I kind of lost that ability. I can't really have a conversation with people. It's really sad. 
I get this anxiety every single time I go to a Chinese restaurant or get anxiety when people speak Cantonese to me because I'm just like trying to keep up, trying to keep up. And <laughs> it's a... Uh, it's really bad. I don't think, I think like it's, it's, it's been really bad, but not only am I taking a course or what course, but I'm actually taking a, um, uh, there's a one-on-one -on -one tutor too for this program. And, uh, it's, it's a really, <laughs> we'll see how it is. I don't want to shout them out yet just because I don't know how good or bad the program is. So I kind of want to go through it and maybe I'll talk about it as well, but that's one thing I've been learning. So I've been really taking the dive into learning something that <laughs> scares the fuck out of me that I've been putting on the back back end. Now, on the other end, another cool thing I've been learning is something called day trading. And with day trading, there's a lot of different strategies. I know a lot of people are saying you can't make money or people end up losing money in the long run and whatnot. But it's kind of like jujitsu. You got to look for the right entries. You got to have the right strategy. Some people will say ground fighting doesn't work. And think about it like this. Like, okay, so if I were to use a martial arts an, uh, analogy, maybe uh, like years and years ago, if you had no skill and you went on the ground, you, it probably wasn't a very good idea to fight on the ground. But as things change, as you develop strategies and develop philosophies and, and test with real time, you, you go a sense of refinement. And this is the art of Kaizen, the the refinement of getting to that optimal state. And with day trading, I've been actually learning from, get this, he's my friend's friend who used to be an investment banker and then did <laughs> consulting as uh, to take a break or he wanted to meet people just for relationships. Now, if you guys don't know, consulting is pretty hardcore. You can work 80 plus hours per week easily through it. One of my great friends, he's a consultant and he... <laughs> He was, uh, it's just very interesting, but he does this and he actually makes a lot more through day trading than actually his job, but he enjoys, he enjoys the relationships for consulting. I don't know. Some people are freaking crazy, but I've been learning through him and he has a proven track record. I saw his numbers and he's someone, he's not like one of these online gurus, right? He's like someone who's a practitioner and somehow in my network of friends, I actually know him. And so my friend is learning from him and I'm learning from my friend. And it's been really interesting because I've been actually pretty good. Like uh, first day I did like 400 bucks profit. The second day I did about 200 bucks profit. And that's good side money. I do it in between my closing calls and stuff. But the number one thing I'm, I'm getting at is like day trading is analogous to something like jujitsu where it's like a lifelong learning Kaizen type of thing. You're learning all these different entries. You're learning to recognize entries. You're learning the different games that you should be playing in day trading. And so what I'm getting at is you should really learn something that makes you excited. I get really excited. It's almost like playing like StarCraft II. It's like a video game. Time goes by so quick and it's it's been really, really fun. Now, am I going to do it full time forever? I don't know, but... I figure this is a very important skill depending on the market. And it's interesting because there's so many different moves, right? Moves that you can make in day trading, but I'm just focusing on one thing at a time. If you guys want me to talk more about day trading and you guys want a tutorial or something like that, I'm definitely not the person to give a tutorial, but I can show you kind of some of the moves that I made and some of the things that I'm learning. I'm more than happy to kind of do like a what I learned today type of Kaizen series as well, right? So let me know in the comments if that is something you're interested in as well. So there's that. The last thing I wanted to talk about is finally something that really, whew, this one is tough. This one is really, really tough because as you can imagine, I, like I mentioned earlier, I'm going through a lot. You can tell that I'm trying to not escape through different modalities, but seek help, whether through dead online mentors like Charles Poliquin. I'm going through some family emergency stuff. I'm going through some business uh, headaches too, and just going through a lot. And one thing I realized is like, through all these experiences that I'm going through is like, especially more business related, I just realized I doubt my decisions a lot of time. And I started asking myself, why, why do I necessarily feel like this, right? Like, why do I always doubt myself? Why do I not feel so confident sometimes, right? Even though 
I oftentimes know what the right answer is on paper. In fact, a lot of like I don't I don't want to give myself too much credit, but a lot of the time I know the the best practices for a lot of different industries. But it's not only this, but I've doubted myself in certain things, like in the past with women, with everyday decisions, with business decisions. And what it comes down to is confidence. And so I asked myself, like, man, why do I struggle with so much confidence? And, you know, I've always known the answer. And it goes back to parenting and our childhood and stuff and revisiting that. And bear with me. If you guys grew up in an Asian household, you guys know all about this. It's just like Asian communities tend to focus on what you suck at. And they always say, don't do this. Don't do that. You're not good at this. You're too fat. You're blah, blah, blah. And when you go through that, it's really, it's almost like, I don't want to say PTSD. It's not the worst thing in the world, but also it's very, it's not the most pleasant thing in the world. And it definitely holds you back. And especially as I get older, I wish I would have gotten this a long time ago. It's something that I'm considering right now. I just literally emailed this person I really resonated with and I'm considering therapy at this moment just to kind of work through some of those issues, work through those confidence issues, work through my relationship issues too. Like think about it like this. My last relationship was probably in when I was 20 years old. I'm 32. Not to say I haven't dated or done anything like since then, but I want to say like around that time, um, well, maybe a little older. I was probably a little older. I don't know. First year of pharmacy school. So yeah, 2010-ish. Yeah. So about, I don't know, 10 years ago. That's my last relationship, man. My last real relationship. And, you know, even though I tell myself that, hey, Kevin, you're busy on your hustle. You're not focusing on that. You're, you're, you're getting the foundation ready for a relationship as well or future family, which because I do want to, I do want a family. Absolutely. I want a family. But what's holding me back? And I think it's that fear, that confidence of being able to do it. Because if you guys don't know my relationship history, it's it's tough. Like I, my last two relationships in my life, I literally gave it my all. Gave every single, like, dude, I gave every single little thing and that I knew at the time. Did the best I could at, at least, right? But they still, it didn't work out. And not saying it's that it's not their fault it's not my fault but emotionally getting over that feeling of of hey kevin you can have a healthy relationship again you can get over this right and have that confidence again i'm missing that you know and i think it like part of it stems from that part of it stems from my early childhood with and my relationship with my father as well where I just never felt confident at anything I did. I always questioned myself because I would always get yelled at no matter what I did, right? And so I'm just trying to break free of that. And I know once I do that, I am I can see all these different areas of my life really flourish as well. So kind of curious, if you, any of you guys are going through this, let me know, but I will keep you guys updated about this therapy thing. And it's definitely well needed if you are... <laughs> If you are going through something very similar like yourselves, guys. Yeah, that's pretty much it this week for the weekly hustle. I thought I'd just keep it kind of more informal. And the, literally, I just blocked. I, I just did a few bullet points of what I want to talk about. If you like this style, let me know in the comments below. And if you have any requested topics, please let me know too. And we'll just keep it, keep it like that. But as always, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. And out of all these topics, which ones did you relate to? Are you relating to the end of life thing? Have you guys talked to your parents or your family members about end of life care? Have you had any debilitating insecurities like me not knowing Cantonese, right? Or struggling with Cantonese? And have any of you guys gone through some serious PTSD-like type of things <laughs> through Asian parenting and you're trying to seek out therapy like myself? We'd we'll love to kind of hear. Um, and I actually would love a, a little bit of your guidance. If you got, guys have gone through any of these, maybe you guys can help me a little bit out too. So that's the realness about Kevin Yi. And this is part of the documentation of hitting Kaizen or hitting that 10, 10 million. It's not even like a care about the 10 million, but you know, it's that aspect of setting goals and getting better over time. That's what wakes me up every single freaking morning. And I actually didn't really want to shoot this podcast today but I forced myself to because it's important to show up 
And I know that. And that's something I don't do very well. And I'm trying to get better. That's why I hired an editor. So that's pretty much it. I will see you guys next week on the Week of the Hustle. Take care. Have a great day. Peace.